we are talking about declining of mankind. Hmm? Why going down and down and down? And what is happening to human beings on this earth? It's according to the Buddha's prediction. So we have gone up to the bottom, isn't it? Yeah? Yes, now try to come up. Uh, can you remember we have you stop number? Eighteen. Today start from eighteen or nineteen. All over the world people are talking ill of human beings. There is nobody to appreciate the human way of life. Everybody is blaming and worrying. At the same time, they are the ones who create, while grumbling and blaming and accusing, they are the ones who create problems also. It is very difficult for us to find out a solution. Everybody is seeking some sort of solution. How to get rid of this unfortunate situation? Many people concentrate on God or supernatural power thinking only heaven can settle our problems. Human beings cannot settle their own problems. And some others believe if human beings are the ones who create problems, if there is anybody in this world who can settle this problem, also must be human beings. So we cannot expect a solution from somewhere else. And the Buddha also adopted the same attitude. His advice is not to seek salvation or solution through external sources. By knowing who create problems and how to stop this problem. Now take for instance, in your family you have misunderstanding, unhappiness, very unpleasant situation at home. But you are not ready to admit that something is wrong with you, one of you, or some of you. So what you do? You go and pray, asking a, some sort of solution to get rid of your problems. If not, you suspect that someone has done something. Now, directly you concentrate this by accusing others. Charms, black magic. If not, you also suspect uh, some sort of spirits or ghost. But how many are there to study and think unbiasedly to find out what are the causes or reasons for our misunderstanding or enmity or unhappiness? We are the ones who create all these problems. Something is wrong somewhere. 
either in our way of thinking or talking or doing something. Something is wrong somewhere. Uh, this is our weakness. We are always waiting to blame others for our own problems. I think you can remember the well-known saying of Confucius. It's a very meaningful saying. Uncultured people always blames others for their problems. That is their attitude. Semi-cultured people blame themselves for their problem. They don't blame others. Fully cultured people blame neither. Try to find out where the mistake is. It's a very meaningful saying. His sayings are very close to the Buddha's saying, very liberal, very unbiased and meaningful. For he tried to settle human problem by depending on humanism, by fulfilling our duties, obligations and responsibilities. He did not introduce a deep philosophy or psychology. All his advice are for us to concentrate, to find out where the mistakes are and how to adjust ourselves. The Buddha has gone beyond that by adopting the same attitude. But he has gone beyond that. To find out the main causes of our mental attitude, others could not give very clear explanation of our problem. We have our own intrinsic or the natural habits. These habits were not given to us by a god or a devil or another person, our own. That is why by nature or from our birth some are bad and some are good. Now that is their intrinsic mental attitude. What they have continued as their mental process. So when we are used to talk and do something and think by using certain mental faculties in our mind that we have developed or used earlier. It is very, very difficult for us to change or to give up that mental attitude. And this problem or this mental attitude of human beings, you cannot find in any philosophy or psychology. Even in the modern psychology, when you study, I don't think you can find out the solution or the answer to this problem. Uh, 
unknown or hidden mental attitude that we maintain in our mind. Actually, we do not know why we are bad. We cannot understand. We know our way of thinking is bad. Our way of talking is bad. Our way of doing certain things also bad. We know this. Even then, we have no courage and no willpower to change this mental attitude. Because we have not realized how we got into this track. Our mental attitude is working according to one particular track in our mind. So it's very difficult to change this track. Now that is the very reason we had to struggle for a long period to train this mind. Wild animals, very fierce animals, also we can change within a short period. Later they become very tame animals, although we cannot trust them fully. But to train this human mind, sometimes throughout our life we try, but can become a failure. The reason is, we have used our mind according to that particular track or the mental faculty for a long period during the previous birth, not only one life. Now that is the secret. I have met many people. They say, we know we are jealous. Actually we cannot understand why we are jealous. We know it is wrong. Uh, that is the answer. That is the mental attitude. To understand this, to determine, to change this mental attitude is not an easy thing. Now, this you cannot find in any other teachings. How we used our mind during our previous birth. And today we are using our mind. We are trying to learn certain things. Try to do certain things, good things and bad things. But most of our activities and thoughts are based on selfishness. For our own benefit. by disregarding how others feel. Then hated cunningness, selfishness become the main cause for them to create such thoughts and do certain things. Kusala Kusala we introduce as meritorious deeds. The real meaning of kusala is a skillful deed. A skillful mean the things that we do, we perform skillfully, 
meaningful, useful, reasonable. That is the meaning of kusala. But in religious language we use merits, meritorious. People neglect. They become crazy to do certain things if they believe that they can enjoy their life. That's all. They don't know to go beyond that. Introduce certain philosophy, dharma, religion, or way of life as true or real religious way of life, according to their way of life. Now what is happening to religious way of life today? We praise that Buddhism is the best religion. Yes, there is no argument. Very good religion. Christians also say Christianity is the most, the most advanced religion today. Islam says that religion is far superior to all the other religions. Hinduism says that is the most ancient and very reasonable and meaningful, very rich religion, philosophy and psychology. But you can collect enough materials from all these religions when you study. We cannot deny. By reading only those religious books, you can find all those good qualities. But when you read their mind, who talk about their religion, can we find such good qualities that they talk or glorify in their mind? How far? Have they trained their mind according to their religious principles? That means today people use religion just to talk and to pray. Only these two things. can pray and worship and talk and recite something if they believe that recitals, whether it is sutra or mantra or anything, can give prosperity, worldly material thing, uh, then they do that. Uh, that is the limit. Then what is the main purpose of religion, any religion? I am trying to tell you how people misinterpreted, misled, and how they use religion today. Every religion. Don't try to argue that your religion is better than other religion. No point. All are equally corrupted. All are crook. All are selfish. That's why I told you when you read the mind, those who talk about their religion, these are the things we can find in their mind. But when we read their holy books, ah, we can find very good information. That means we have abused religion by 
lower it. The basic principles of religion, according to our way of life. Let us take five principles. So simple. Initial stage, beginning of a religious life. My presence. Before we go further and further and further, let us analyze whether we are practicing the basic principle of this faith, beginning. If we cannot observe these simple principles, then how can we go further? Where can we see the development of religious life? What are those five? We know disturbing, hurting, killing or destroying others' life. Everybody knows it is wrong, but how many people can practice this? We know a stealing or bluffing, swindling, cheating, smuggling, all these things are wrong, but how many people practice this principle? We know sexual misconduct is wrong, but when we see the world, all over the world, how human beings behave, they have no shame, no fear. Telling lies, I think better not to talk about it. Is there anybody in this world, any human being, actually who practices this principle? Taking intoxicating drinks and drugs, of course there are some people, not because of their religion, because some are not used to it. Some don't like it. Now these are the basic if we cannot uphold these five principles, how can we go further? And all the other religions also maintain the same principles, but they too violate everything. So religious life is only for the name's sake. Uh, that is why here the Buddha said there will be a time that people use their religion only to talk or to do something only for their personal gain. So we are facing this problem. Then, adharma, dharma and adharma. Dharma is truth, or justice, or peace, or righteous way of life, dharma. But people introduce adharma in the name of dharma. They try to justify certain cruel, selfish, harmful methods or discrimination, or hatred towards others, or harm others as the duties of their religion. They justify. Uh, this is the way how they try to introduce adharma in the name of dharma. Actually, 
Dharma is not belong to any religion. Please remember this. For the Buddha's teaching we use this word, Dharma. But Dharma is not belong to any particular religion. Dharma is not a property of any religion. We can maintain dharma without depending on any religion or without referring to any religious teaching, if you can understand. Who revealed this? Now here, the uniqueness or the nature of enlightenment of the Buddha you can understand here that he did not try to claim that dharma is belong to Buddhism or dharma is revealed by the Buddha, created by the Buddha. No. This you can find in Anguttara Nikaya. Sutra Pitaka. What is this saying? He says, the Buddhas appear in this world from time to time. When they appear, they reveal and explain the nature of Dharma. But the dharma always exists in this world whether the Buddhas appear or not. Now this is the saying of the Buddha. What does it mean? The dharma exists but we do not respect we do not, do not uphold, we do not try to understand. Just ignore. So one day, when another Buddha appeared in this world, he pointed, this is Dharma. These are your duties. These are the bad things, these are the good things. This is the method, this is the way for you to practice. Uh, he revealed only this one. The Buddhas cannot create dharma. So the existing dharma, he revealed and explained. So dharma never disappears, but we forget. The dharma, we accommodate more and more ignorance, more and more adharma, more and more selfish ideas completely disappear from our minds. Just like shame and fear disappear from many people's minds, they have no shame. Here you can see how adharma is a spreading all over the world. But they say, oh, our dharma, our religion is a spreading all over the world. More and more followers come and accept our religion. More and more places of worship they built all over the world. They spent so much money. As I mentioned again, a study observed their mind, the nature of their mind, how far they have developed. one or two religious principles, unbiased religious principles, common religious principles. 
honesty. How many honest people are there among those who glorify about their religion? How many people can observe patience? How many people are kind to others? How many people are there who want to cooperate with others, work without showing any discrimination or hostility? Uh, these are the common religious principles. If these qualities are not in our human mind, I really cannot understand in which way that we are trying to show that we are religious. You can see. All these human beings are our brothers and sisters. Racial, cultural, traditional differences are not that bad. They can, many people can tolerate. But when they come to religion, their respective religion, they go mad. They become violent. They discriminate, hate others, those who are not belong to their religion. What sort of religion? All are human beings, human mind. They use. Who poisons their mind? If they were not taught from their childhood to show such discrimination towards others, they never do that, because they do not know how to do that. But they were taught by their parents, by their elders, by their religious teachers to hate others, those who are not belong to their religion. That's why I told you, in the name of dharma, they are introducing adharma. There is no dharma there. Whatever religious label they have, they have no religious mind. Then, they concentrate more on their worldly, material things, their own pleasure, their own enjoyment, even by using that religion. It's happening. So you and we behave like this, poor religion gets the blame. But we have polluted the purity of religion, because we use cunningness, selfishness through this religion, just like politics. Politicians use cunningness and selfishness. The same thing has happened to religion also. Uh, then, after neglecting their religious duties, how they start their problems, how they aggravate their situation, how they accuse their family line. Husbands and wife, parents and children, brothers and sisters, relatives. 
Confucius and the Buddha, both of them have devoted so much of their time to tell us so what are the duties for us to fulfill, to lead a family life, household life. But many people just neglect their duties, responsibilities, because they are crazy for something else. So there is no unity, harmony, understanding, relationship at home amongst their family members. There is no happiness at home. Many people say, when they go home they feel very unhappy. They like to go out. When they go out they feel happy. Their own blood Why? How far they have neglected their duties? We always worship devas, gods, thinking that they are very powerful. But you do not know the king of deva, the sakra, Worship us. Do you know that? Have you ever heard? Yes. Ah, here, how the Buddha has revealed this. Ye gahatta punyakara silavanta upasaka. Namme na dharam posen, tam namasthami matar, sattra says. Namasthami, I respect those human beings who fulfill their duties. Then who are they? Ye gahatha, those householders, punyakara, those who perform meritorious deeds. Just now I mentioned a skillful deeds, meaningful, useful, reasonable. It's called meritorious deeds. Who fulfill meritorious deeds. Those who observe certain principles, either as or according to humanism or religion, they have principles. By maintaining their dignity, human dignity, this is called seal, principle. Upasaka, those who lead a noble life without harming and disturbing others. Dhamme na dharang posen, this is very important. Those who maintain, those who attend, to their wife and children, who look after their wife and children by adapting righteous way of life, harmless method. People say, we have to do all those dirty things, immoral things or wicked things just to look after our family. But here the Sakra those householders who look after their wife and children by adapting a righteous way of life, reasonable or harmless way of life. 
those who fulfill their duties towards their wife and children. Dhammena dharam kosa, tam namasam kara, I respect it. So the king of God respect those human beings who uphold these noble principles. There is another saying. Usually devas can fly by using their supernatural power, like birds. They are invisible to us. When those devas move here and there, if there is anybody who has attained even the first stage of sainthood, sotapan, that is the lowest stage, if there is one who has attained the first stage of sainthood, sotapan, those devas never go above this person to respect that person one. Uh, this is the way how they respect seal, morality, principles. Then, how many families are there in this world where we can find peaceful, harmonious, understanding and contented husband and wife and parents and children with their mutual understanding and cooperation. When you study our human history, anthropology, the human mind is such that they wanted their children and grandchildren and grand-grandchildren also to live in the same house. Why? That gives lot of moral support, confidence. All can agree with each other because they fulfill their duty towards each other. No misunderstanding. Ah, this is our history. But today, how many married children can live with their own parents? How many years can they live together? Now see the, the mentality. Cannot live together. Trouble start within few months. No cooperations, no patience, no understanding, no harmony among those family members. And here the Buddha says, now this situation also going down and down and down. It is true, it is happening. When you study the way of life in the West, actually it's very pathetic. Pity on them. We think they are enjoying their life. Old ladies and old men, what sort of miserable life they are leading in those places? They cannot live with their parents, children or grandchildren, separate. But here in Asian countries, 
our grandfathers and grandmothers and very pleasant peaceful happy life because of their grandchildren they like to play with them spend their time with them and they don't feel the burdens of their life at that age because of their grandchildren unfortunately in the west they cannot do that of course they have their own reason we cannot blame them we can say that is their way of life and we are also adapting that way of life in this part of the world because we do not fulfill our duties so it is not the development of the mankind but deterioration if we cannot live together then what will happen evil practices immoral practices which were regarded as very bad very shameful are regarded as very clever and very useful way of life also start clever man is a cunning man cunning man is a selfish man honest man is a foolish man today kind man is a stupid man today he must become wicked and cruel ah then people say he is very clever already started that is what the buddha says people don't want to respect honesty kindness they have no place in the society so they started to bluff each other then certain things that people have done secretly say about 50 to 100 years ago now i can remember 50 to 60 years i can remember certain things so when we were small children in our families in our village or in our country at that time certain things that they have regarded as very bad very immoral very dangerous harmful don't do that feeling was there at that time but today all those immoral harmful indecent practices have become very common nobody talk about ill of all this what is their excuse they say everybody is doing and uh, that is the only excuse everybody is doing therefore i also must do uh, here in this chakravarti sihanada sutta the buddha says in time to come many of those immoral harmful unreasonable attitudes become very common amongst the human being then love relationship understanding in each other discriminations this 
disturbances, accusation, suspicion. This mental attitude becomes very common. That means when we meet each other, first thing that we suspect, I suspect you and you suspect me. That is the first thing. See, what a pity. How far we have corrupted, polluted our human mind. Cannot trust. Then I try to bluff you and you try to bluff me. A few days ago, a man came here and told me that he wants to donate few thousand dollars to this temple. He is not a Buddhist. He said, I don't like other religion, I like this religion. And uh, I got, tomorrow I get the money. At least five thousand dollars I want to donate to this temple. But I want to get a signature of another witness. So tomorrow I can claim the money. So I want to go there. Can I have two dollars for, to go there by taxi? <laughs> uh, this is the nature of human mind. So how can I trust? How many hundreds of them come to me like this? If not in thousand, how many hundreds of them? If they can approach a religious man, what about you? I told you the other day, not only ordinary laymen, even so-called monks, how they bluff others. The monks who came to this temple, Spend one night here. Next day morning he come and ask, uh, he want to buy the ticket to go to, I don't know to tell the name of the place, then you come to know who this person <laughs> Then I ask, why did you come here? For what purpose? From where did you come? Not knowing all those things, there is no meaning of giving anything to you. I do not know anything about you. So I did not give him anything. Then he approached some of those people, and I also heard the, he approached certain, some of our ladies, collected few hundred dollars, gone. After three days' time I saw again he was moving around here in this temple. He goes from temple to temple like this. So our innocent people, for our devotees I always say, kind-hearted fools, because they never think twice. Oh, he's a monk, you know, we must be, have support them, man, very bad to say, no, he's a monk, you know. They are number one crook, they use this one to collect money, say these people behave like fools. How many times I have given this warning, not to trust at once. They can come and discuss with us, we know they are better than any of if monks also can bluff others, what about you people? Can I trust you? Uh, this is the nature of human mind today. I told you how people come and try to bluff me. So now, in future, <laughs> I am not going to behave like a kind-hearted fool. So, by knowing this situation, the Buddha has given this word for us to understand. In time to come, human beings use their mind in this way, always to bluff others. No honesty in human mind. So how can we develop our relationship and love and compassion and understanding? Our way of extending 
our love and compassion only by using words, but there's nothing in our mind. I think you can remember, I have told you, several times I told you this, to understand the nature of our human mind. What we recite for our meditation, mitta, we talk a lot about mitta, loving kindness. When you study mitta sutta, say, sabbe satta bhavantu sukhitatta, all living beings, irrespective of they are, what do you call, origin, whether they are humans or animals or visible or invisible, big or small, the Buddha's advice. Uh, then it will become real loving kindness. If you limit your kindness only towards human beings, it is not loving kindness. It is favoritism. You love only your race. You love only amongst your fellow religionists. You don't love the followers of other religions. Now this is the nature of love today. But just now I mentioned you have no love at home also. Real love is not there. So when this person was reciting this metta, loving kindness meditation, he was reciting not in Pali, in English, so may all living beings be well and happy. Going on reciting, reciting, reciting is the development of loving kindness, compassion towards all those living beings. So when he was meditating and meditating, may all living beings be well and happy, spend, I don't know, one or two hours, a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> Mosquitoes come and start to attack here and there. So I realized, may all those living be well and happy. <laughs> may they live long. <laughs> he never, <laughs> never stopped his recital. Went on practicing meditating. Uh, this is the way how we extend our loving kindness towards others. <laughs> uh, this is the nature of our human mind. <laughs> Nothing in our mind, all external. So when this situation continues for a long period, they start to attack each other without any mercy and no humane feeling anymore. Even animals, they have their natural feeling towards their own group. So they don't attack their own. But our minds, when completely polluted and corrupted, we cannot maintain that animal attitude. We attack our own group our own human beings. No feeling. So when you compare your way of life with those people, uh, you are far better than the other. At least you have taken the trouble to come and listen and think and try to understand something. By knowing it is important for your life. What about others? They have no such idea. Day and night they are teaching how to bluff others, how to rob others, how to disturb others. Majority here in this world, among human beings, 
Đến đi em sao thật Đến When this human mind is completely polluted, no more humane qualities, no more virtues, no more moral conduct, the mental waves, the vibrations that we radiate from our mind, All are poisonous vibrations, just like poisonous gas. Because our mental vibration can change so many things in this atmosphere. A lot of changes take place. environments and elements. You know, in certain countries, after developing their mind, by using that mental energy, without touching, keep a piece of iron rod here on the table, and develop this mental energy, focus directly towards this piece of iron. And later, you can see how this piece of iron bends like this. Mental energy. How that energy can change the element. When you study so many uh, religious stories, Buddhists and Hindu and Christians and so many stories, there are so many similar incidents. You see, how can we believe? We cannot believe because we have not developed our mind up to that extent. That is why we cannot believe. So the same mind we can divert poisonous vibration, hatred, anger, jealousy, grudge, ill will, enmity, selfishness, see, all are poisonous mental vibrations. So from each and every person's mind, these things are radiated. Then, on the other hand, innocent people who live here and there go on cursing, accusing, blaming, crying and worrying. Another kind of poisonous mental violence. There is nobody to radiate kindness, compassion, understanding, patience, no, nothing, completely gone. Ah, then you can see how changes take place in this world. Of course people say, God create all these changes and God destroy this world because they cannot understand this. Who change? Who destroy? Who abuse? I told you, not from above. All come from human mind. If human beings cannot train or make use of real human mind, they must be prepared to face the consequences created by them. Don't blame others. Then, unknown, unheard, peculiar type of sicknesses. The 
yes, we do. How did you start? Very funny signature. They're spreading all over the world. Who is responsible for that? Human behavior, immoral attitude, poisonous thoughts, completely ruin the physical body. How, how they do that? When the mind comes poisonous, evil forces affect brain cells, neurons and blood cells, glands and various organs. And the blood circulation in the heart and the stomach. And we do not know what type of sicknesses that we had to face. Ah. So the mind is solely responsible for all these problems. Then the imbalance, elemental imbalance in the physical. Throughout our life we had to take precautions, medicines, because of this, every day we are complaining. What is the cause? Meat, fluid, wind. Let us take these three. According to Ayurvedic medical science and Chinese medical system, they take these three. And the main cause heat, wind and fluid. After examining the pulse, ah, they say, if they can say, or heat in your body, ah, there's more heat. Heat creates this signal. Why? The other elements cannot agree with heat and imbalance. In some other cases, this is wind, or more wind in your body. Why more wind here? Yeah. Anybody pumps wind into the body? Nobody. No cooperation with the other elements. And then the fluid, blood, phlegm, and so many other things that squeeze from the glands also become poisonous. Then who created all these problems? Mind. Today, meditation has become a common practice in many countries mostly non-Buddhist in the West. They experience a lot of good results to reduce that tension, that imbalance and so many sicknesses that they experienced earlier could manage to get rid through this meditation. Of course, the main purpose of meditation is not that, but at least they experience some sort of relief through this meditation. I clearly show the mind is the main cause. Recently they have done another experiment in America. They fix one tube here and the other end into a bottle with certain chemicals and provoke, create anger, impatience, unrest in 
that man's mind and allow him to be. Another person also, after fixing this tube and the other end into a bottle, by playing nice music to calm the mind, and talking nicely, gently, to calm this person's mind, to reduce his tension, fear, and so many other mental disturbances. After that, what they have to collected in the bottle during this period, after boiling, they found out. The person who harbored anger, hatred, and impatience and unrest, certain substance they are in that bottle, bottle yellowish color, after boiling. Then they have given a little bit to rats and guinea pig died within few minutes. No, it is true, it has appeared various methods, how they have tested. What I have told you this now, how we pollute the whole atmosphere by radiating anger, hatred, jealousy and all those things. Uh, this is a simple example. And the other one, the person who calmed his mind, collected something, boiled, and there is nothing, no one. Now again let us refer to the Buddha, the first saying of the Dhammapada. All our pleasant and unpleasant, happy and unhappy, peaceful, or oh, miserable life here in this world depend on our minds. Our minds are responsible for all this. Unless and until we train and came and discipline this mind, there is no peace, there is no happiness. There is no satisfaction, there is no precaution, no security in this world. So number 22. So next Friday can complete, I think. So remind me number 22.